Hi everyone. Today in this video we are going to discuss about nifedipine. How this drug acts, what is the mechanism, side effects, drug interactions and clinical use of this calcium channel blocker. Within the name we can observe the suffix dipine. The suffix dipine indicates this drug is a dihydropyridine. So from this term we can take the suffix dipine. So dipine indicates is a dihydropyridine derivative. And nifedipine is a calcium channel blocker commonly known as CCB. We have three types of calcium channel blockers like diphenyl alkylamines and benzothiazepines. And third one is the dihydropyridines. So nifedipine is a dihydropyridine derivative which acts as a calcium channel blocker on the vascular smooth muscle. So what is the structure of this nifedipine? So nifedipine is a dihydropyridine. We can observe the structure like this. And here this pyridine is saturated at first and fourth position. So we can start the numbering here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we can observe that the first and fourth positions are saturated. That's why this ring system is called as 1,4 dihydropyridine ring system. And this 1,4 dihydropyridine ring system is having the carboxylic acid which forms an ester at third and fifth position. And here it is forming an ester with the methyl groups. So at the third and fifth position, we can represent these esters as 3,5 dicarboxylate, which are forming esters with the methyl groups. So we can put the dimethyl at the start of the name. So simply, nifedipine is a dimethyl 1,4 dihydropyridine 3,5 dicarboxylate derivative. And these esters are very important for determining the duration as well as distribution of the drug. So nifedipine is a short acting calcium channel blocker because of methyl esters present at the third and fifth position. Similarly, this structure is also having the methyl groups at second and sixth position. So we can represent this as 2,6 dimethyl. And at the fourth position, it is having a phenyl ring, which is attached with the nitro group at the second position. Again, this group is important for the activity of uh, nifedipine. So at the fourth position, it is having the 2 nitrophenyl. This 2 nitrophenyl can also be called as ortho nitrophenyl. So ortho nitrophenyl group is present at the fourth position, which increases the activity of the nifedipine. So these are the structural features of this drug, and this is a 1,4 dihydropyridine derivative. But now let us see how this drug acts as vasodilator. So nifedipine mainly acts on the vascular smooth muscle. The vascular smooth muscle is expressed with the L-type calcium channels. Through these L-type calcium channels, calcium can enter into the vascular smooth muscle, where it is responsible for the contraction. But this calcium is going to bind with one of the protein that is the calmodulin. Calmodulin is the modulator for the calcium actions. So this calcium can bind to this calmodulin such that it is going to form the calcium calmodulin complex, which is responsible for the activation of contractile mechanism within the vascular smooth muscle. Now this calcium calmodulin complex is going to act on one of the target MLCK, myosin light chain kinases. These are the phosphorylating enzymes which are normally under resting conditions. But when the calcium levels are increased and they are forming a complex with the calmodulin, this calcium calmodulin complex can activate the MLCK such that this MLCK is going to become an active form. Now this MLCK in the active form, it can phosphorylate the target and one of the important target is the myosin light chains. Within this myosin light chains, a regulatory light chain will be present on which this MLCK can act and phosphorylate this chain such that it can form a complex with the actin. Now this MLCK can act on this myosin light chains at the regulatory site such that they are going to produce the phosphorylated myosin light chains. So MLC phosphate is going to be formed. Now in the phosphorylated form, this MLC is more active. It can bind with the actin such that it is going to form a actomyosin complex. This actomyosin complex is responsible for the contraction of the vascular smooth muscle. In this way, Vascular smooth muscle is contracted by calcium ions which are entering into the smooth muscle through the L-type calcium channels. Now these L-type calcium channels are having one of the site that is the dihydropyridine binding site. Now here nifedipine is a dihydropyridine which can bind to this dihydropyridine binding site such that it can inhibit the activity of the L-type calcium channels. So when this nifedipine is going to block the L-type calcium channels, calcium cannot enter into the vascular smooth muscle thereby it cannot produce the contraction. In this way, nifedipine can reduce the vascular smooth muscle contraction, thereby it can reduce the blood pressure. 
What are the form class actions? We have seen that knife pin is going to block the L-type calcium channels. But these L-type calcium channels are present on the two important muscles. First one, they are present on the vascular smooth muscle. So knife pin is going to block the L-type calcium channels which are present on the vascular smooth muscle. Thereby produce the vasodilatation. But at the same time, these L-type calcium channels are also present on the heart. So knife pin cannot act on these L-type calcium channels which are present on the cardiac muscle. So this drug is having the more selectivity towards the L-type calcium channels present on the vascular smooth muscle rather than the cardiac muscle. That's why this drug is selectively producing the vasodilatation and because of this, nifedipine can produce the arterial vasodilatation, thereby it can reduce the peripheral resistance and as the peripheral resistance decreases, it can reduce both diastolic blood pressure as well as systolic blood pressure. As nifedipine is selectively acting on the vascular smooth muscle, it is not used as an antiarrhythmic agent as this drug is not blocking the L-type calcium channels present on the cardiac muscle. That's why nifedipine can be used in the treatment of angina as well as hypertension, but it is not used for the cardiac arrhythmias. What are the side effects? Most of the side effects of nifedipine are related to the vasodilatory actions. And since this drug acts as a vasodilator, it can produce few of the side effects like the hypotension as well as headache, cerebral vasodilatation, and it can produce some dizziness, a drowsiness in the patient can be observed and flushing, increased vasodilator response with increased heat sensation can be observed in the patients because of the vasodilatation and some fatigue and asthenia can also be observed with the nifedipine. And this drug can also produce few of the side effects like the palpitations, awareness of heartbeat, as well as tachycardia increase in the heart rate. These two side effects are observed with the nifedipine because of the reflex action. As the nifedipine produces a vasodilatation, it reduces the blood pressure, thereby it reduces the perfusion pressure. And when the perfusion pressure is reduced, it can stimulate the baroreceptors, which stimulates the sympathetic activity. And by increasing the sympathetic activity, it can increase the palpitations as well as the tachycardia. And this baroreceptor reflex can also activate the renin angiotensin system which can also act on the heart to increase the rate of contraction. In this way, nifedipine can produce a reflex tachycardia because of vasodilatation. And another important side effect is the peripheral edema. Since the nifedipine acts as a vasodilator, it can increase the capillary permeability which results in the accumulation of the body fluids resulting in the peripheral edema. So some ankle swelling can also be observed with the nifedipine because of these edemic conditions. And we can also observe other side effects like nausea, constipation as well as nasal congestion with the nifedipine. What are the precautions? The main precaution is the hypotension. This drug produces hypotension and if this drug is given with the other drugs like the beta blockers, otherwise the alpha 1 blockers, which further increase the hypotension resulting in the severe hypotension, which may result in a sudden coma in the patients. So whenever these drugs are given along with the other hypotensive agents, the dose should be adjusted and, and blood pressure should be carefully monitored. Similarly, another precaution is the peripheral edema. Normally, nifedipine can increase the edema because of the increased capillary permeability and this edema may further increase the fluid retention as well as it can increase the risk of the congestive heart failure. So if this drug is used to treat the hypertension during the congestive heart failure, the peripheral edema may further deteriorate the conditions, which should be thoroughly checked. Drug interactions. Nifedipine is metabolized by cytochrome P450 system, so CYP3A4 inhibitors like the azole antifungals such as ketoconazole, itraconazole and fluconazole. Similarly, macrolides like erythromycin, telithromycin. And similarly, if you have the antivirals like the ritonavir, all these are the strong CYP3A4 inhibitors. Similarly, grapefruit juice, all these can inhibit the CYP3A4 enzyme, thereby they inhibit the metabolism of the nifedipine, which may increase the toxicity of this drug. So whenever these CYP3A4 inhibitors are given along with the nifedipine, the dose should be reduced in order to prevent the toxicity. Similarly, CYP inducers like rifampin, phenobarbital, phenytoin and carbamzepine, all these drugs can increase the metabolism of nifedipine which results in the failure of the treatment. Similarly, if you have the drugs like the beta blockers, calcium channel blockers and alpha 1 blockers, all these drugs can produce the 
vasodilatation, thereby they produce hypotension. And if these drugs are combined with the nifedipine and they are concomitantly used, they may produce a severe hypotension. So whenever these drugs are combined, the blood pressure should be carefully monitored. What are the clinical uses? Just already we have discussed this nifedipine acts on the vascular smooth muscle. So this drug is mainly used as an antihypertensive. As well as this drug can also be used in the vasospastic angina where the angina is going to be produced by a fixed narrowing of the blood vessels. And this drug can also be used for the management of chronic stable angina along with the other vasodilators. How it is given? Nifedipine is given as a capsule, otherwise it is also available as a extended release tablets. As a capsule form, it is available at the different doses like the 10 mg and 20 mg. And as extended release tablets, it is available at 30 mg, 60 mg and it is also available at 90 mg. The initial dose of the nifedipine is started at a low dose at 10 mg, 3 times daily. But when it is used as an extended release tablet, we can start the initial dose at 30 mg or 60 mg based on the clinical conditions. And these external release tablets should be given once daily in order to produce the antihypertensive action. So that's about the nifedipine. Nifedipine is a calcium channel blocker belonging to the dihydropyridine category. And this drug is having the simple esters like the methyl esters on the third and fifth portion. So it's a dimethyl 1,4 dihydropyridine 3,5 dicarboxylate. And at the fourth portion is having the ortho nitrophenyl ring system which increase the action of nifedipine. This drug is selectively blocking the L-type calcium channels present on the vascular smooth muscle. Thereby it inhibits the influx of the calcium which results in the prevention of contraction. In this way nifedipine can produce the arterial vasodilatation thereby reduce the peripheral resistance as well as this drug can reduce diastolic as well as systolic blood pressures. And because of these actions, nifedipine can be used as an antihypertensive as well as this drug can be used to maintain the vasospastic angina and chronic stable angina. Since this drug is not acting on the cardiac muscle, this drug is not used for the cardiac arrhythmias. It is only used in the conditions like the hypertension as well as the angina. The side effects of this drug is mainly because of the vasodilatory response. It produces a hypotension, headache, dizziness, flushing, fatigue. And it can also produce some reflux tachycardia and palpitations because of the stimulation of the sympathetic system by reflux mechanism. Peripheral edema is another important side effect because of this it can produce some ankle swelling. And it can also produce other side effects like the nausea, constipation and nasal congestion. And this drug should be carefully given with the CYP3F4 inhibitors as well as inducers. And along with the other hypotensive agents like the beta blockers, alpha blockers and other calcium channel blockers. This drug should be carefully given in order to prevent the severe hypotension. So that's about this nifedipine. Hope you have enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel. Share this video with your friends. Post your comments in the comment box. Thank you for watching this video.